Okay, so we're picking up where we left off. And one point I want to make before going forward is, um, uh, you know, the approach here is just to get used to the idea that I could create some poses and then I could quickly use the do uh, dope sheet to offset that. So I get this overlapping motion. I would not say that this is what, you know, then you're done, right? That's perfect animation. I would definitely look at uh, some of the other little details in here. You know, one thing that strikes me at the very beginning, you know, as it moves, it's all kind of leaning forward. And maybe what would happen is the, the segment one down here at the root would start to move forward. And then maybe these would take a second to, ca uh, to catch up. So, you know, maybe this one should just be counter rotated backwards just a smidge. <clears throat> to kind of, you know, to show that it's getting started. But I'm, I'm not going to worry about that because I really want to create a loop out of uh, this stuff here in a minute anyways. Right, so, um, so I'm just going to leave that for now. So just to clarify, let's turn on, <laughs> go away for an hour. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now the trick is, well, what if I want to, um, the other part of this assignment is to create this little system, right? Some little movable appendage. This is a very simple one. I'd hope and I will demonstrate the idea that we could do something much more complex or and interesting later on. Um, so uh, how would I put this into a cloner system? Maybe what's the best way to, to utilize this? So then we start getting towards this idea of procedural animation. Okay, so I have a segment and if I create a cloner object, the important thing is that, you know, if I have a hierarchy, whatever I put here, um, uh, whatever the first uh, item is that goes into the cloner object, I'm not going to have control over its motion animation. I won't be able to move it. Um, <clears throat> and this will be important just in the way I demo this, the way it's moving. Maybe when I put it in the cloner system, it's going to be oriented the wrong way. So um, there's several ways you can do this. <clears throat> First and foremost, I would always just kind of create a null whenever I have a hierarchy that's going to go into a cloner system. So I'll just, just call it um, tail group. Just so I have that. And so I have, um, so this one, this is I'm, once I put it in the cloner system here in a second, and I, I'm going to put everything in this hierarchy, I'm not going to be able to do anything to tail. So now what I'm going to do is add, oops, sorry, uh, spline tool. I'm just going to add a little circle. <clears throat> Let's make the object point upwards. That's good enough. Um, so I'm going to position this in a, in a whole little family tree, right? So the tail group's going to go into the cloner system and go wherever the cloner tells it to be. If I need to offset, so I'm going to call this, uh, I'll just call this offset control, right? So if I need to make any changes in the arrangement, I can do it here on my own. And then of course, all these are just going to be where the animation is happening. So I'm going to select the tail group. I'm going to hold down. Oh, I always forget. This is option command. I think it's command. Um, I'm going to go over to cloner. Oops, I was wrong. It's uh, option or alt cloner, right? So I just put the, um, let's move out here a little bit. I put the whole entire um, group into this and you can see it clones the objects, it clones the animation, um, which is kind of nice, right? So I'll, I'll leave that where it is. Um, but I don't really like this grid orientation. What I really want is a radial representation and let's make the array a little bit bigger. And for starters, let's, I don't know, I'll do eight. So let's see what's happening here. So this is nice, but um, one thing I don't like is that it's rotating the wrong way, right? It's rotating side to side. I want it to rotate in and out, right? Like towards the center and then and, and, and towards, so um, I'll just leave it here in the middle where I can see it's rotating. I'm going to go to the offset control, right? And if I just click on its coordinates, you can play with whatever the rotation is. So it's probably heading. <clears throat> Minus 90. Right? So that looks pretty nice, but it also, uh, they end up touching in the center. So let's see if I, if 
I modified the banking here. And if you're like, wait a minute, which one do I use? This is why I left the animation here in the middle so I can see which way they were bent. And then I just selected these channels. Rotation gets calculated, it's very complicated. That's not the point for this uh, tutorial or, or really the class, it can get um, a little bit messy. But you can see I have uh, my little appendages, right? Doing their little wave um, here at the center and they're oriented out. And this would be the idea like, I don't know, let's see if I, I think I did this in class where I create a little torus. And let's make this, inflate that out. There we go, something like that, right? Right, and as you would imagine, I could parent this so that if I end up moving the torus, you know, they all go along for the ride. So let's, the one thing about this too is um, they're all moving now at the same time. So it was kind of like what we had before, where we had the tail, now we're gonna call this, I don't know, a little tentacle. The little tentacle, it was achieving that pose. They were all happening at the same time. So now we have a system and they're all moving at the same time, which doesn't look, again, if it was mechanical, maybe that's the right thing. But if this is gonna be meant to be kind of organic, even if we're just using cubes, this still looks weird from a motion standpoint. So I'm gonna select the cloner. Uh, I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna choose the uh, random uh, effector, right? So I'll go into random as a default, random says, hey, let's uh, change the position. I don't want to change the position. I wouldn't mind, uniformly modifying the scale a little bit, right? So maybe there's a little bit of variation within that. That's kind of nice. And I guess I could do a little bit of the, <clears throat> so let me just shift it along the X and the Z a little bit. Um, I want them all to be kind of in the same Y. I don't want to offset the, the height, right? So I'll leave that zero. So I just want a little bit of change. So I've um, tweaked the position a little bit. I tweaked the scale a little bit. You could even tweak the rotation, but I do this cautiously. But a little bit of random, uh, a few random values, just keep this from looking um, synthetic, right? All right, so now I have, you can see there, just a few different shapes, right? If I don't like the fact that, well, I don't like this one that it's bigger or whatever, I can go back to the effector and just change the seed value, or I can say, give me a, a new set of randomness, right? So I like this one better, right? So that's good. Uh, last thing, most importantly in the parameter is, and I hate that it's down here, <laughs> um, but uh, it says time offset. So I'll just do 10 frames, seems kind of obvious. I wonder if I do minus 10 frames. Eh, just 10 frames. All right? So I get this. They're all doing similar things, right? But the animation is offset from each other. Of course, and now it comes to the point where it comes to a rest. So that's maybe that's what I would want. But I can also set this up to be an infinite loop, right? So let's go back to our segments. <clears throat> and they start and they start stop. What I'm gonna do is, uh, well, let's just select all these. I'm gonna delete all the keyframes at the end and I'm gonna delete all the keyframes at the beginning. So now you see I just have one animation, right? Ta-da! <laughs> Um, uh, but <laughs> sorry. So I'm going to select all these keyframes and um, just like we were doing with the boxy animation, we'll go to function and the track before we want it to um, uh, oscillate before. So oscillate just means repeat in a ping pong fashion, right? So um, you'll see this here, right? So it uh, it takes the animation and repeats it so that it would be at this one and then it would go to this one and it would go back to that one. Right, and that's what its loop is. Um, and so we'll do the same thing, function um, track after. So how is it gonna repeat after those, the keyframes that I put in there? Again, we want uh, oscillate after. So you can see I get this big wave, right? So 
a little weird that's oh it's just because of the offset here let's I'm curious about this if I make it to minus 10 oh, that's interesting so it's not <clears throat> for whatever reason it's kind of glitching on that so that's easy enough to fix I could go into the dope sheet and just select all my keyframes and bring them over and say you know start at zero And if I need to, I can offset the animation and actually put it in the, the negative, right? So it kind of starts mid oscillation. Let's make this 300 so it just keeps going on for a while. Let's go up to the cloner. And you know what? Eight was nice. How about 24? All right, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, the other thing you could do with this is keyframe the uh, the offset values, like how much this is uh, happening. We could also use uh, um, a fall off, I guess, if we wanted to. I haven't really tried that this much. Let's put the uh, random modifier in there, a random uh, field. All right, you can see I can control that way. Let's go ahead and pause. And uh, let's do uh, a radial, or sorry, spherical. So you can see where the, the randomness is happening. All right, so some of those are um, moving in conjunction with each other, and others are all over the place. I'm just experimenting. So I wanted to, I think that's part of it though, is seeing how we can use fields to, to offset some things. So I could add multiple fields in here to, to change these effects and control it a little in a different fashion. Okay, so uh, 12 minutes, let's stop there. So I'll come back and do one more tutorial um, towards the end of this with the idea that, you know, there's lots of different systems that we could, uh, we could develop, right? As this, you know, however this is gonna work. So uh, I'll end this here and I'll come back for part three.